Hey y'all, welcome back to Business Gossip. This is episode two, but y'all, we are doing something completely different today. So I got a lot of requests asking me to do a backstory of who I am, where Rashida came from, how did I be home, how did I get homeless, all that good stuff. So I hope y'all got some popcorn, some wine or something, because my life is a movie child. So I'm laying it all out on the table. Y'all know I got my little blanket. So we about to have some gossip, okay? So my name is Rashida Moray, and this is Business Gossip, episode two, where I teach you everything, giving you all the tea, everything business, okay? But today, we're doing something different. This is going to be a little story time of how I became homeless, where I came from, grew up, all that good stuff, how I overcame it, everything. So I don't care what you're going through in your life or in your business or what you have gone through baby you can overcome it because when I tell y'all what I have been through y'all will be like yeah it ain't that bad I promise you so we're gonna name these people so I have a couple of people in this story time that I have to kind of like decode their names okay but we're gonna name one person um we're gonna name her Tatiana and we gonna name the other person no good okay no good is a male this is a dude and Tatiana clearly y'all know what a Tatiana is but we gonna name her Tatiana <laughs> we gossiping this is business gossip and it has everything to do with business too because this is how I overcame everything and I got into business because of this because of this situation is the reason why I am who I am today and where I am today part of it most of it so how I became homeless well just a little backstory of who I am first of all my name is Rashida Moray if you do not know who I am some of my old students who came to my workshops follow me on um YouTube so they knew who I am but if you're new here my name is Rashida Moray my name is actually Rashida Murray um but my teachers growing up mispronounced my name so I made it to Moray, M-O-U-R-A-E, and that's my the name of my sundress brand, but my last name is actually, well, my maiden name is actually Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y. It's just that when I was in school and they used to call the attendants, they'd be like, Rashida Moray? So I was like, okay, well, that was kind of cute. <laughs> so I just made it into my my brand name. I just branded myself as Rashida Moray, and it was my way of holding on to my last name, Um after my dad passed. My dad passed in May, who was my rock. Anybody knows me, know how much my daddy mean to me. And that was really, really rough on me. I was his caregiver for the past um, year and he kind of declined, but we, we let, me, let me stay on topic. Y'all know I talk too much. So um, I wouldn't say I had a rough childhood. I did not have a rough childhood, but I did not grow up with being rich either like I didn't have it like that at all but I did have my dad in my life my mom was in my life I was in sports I was in all every extracurricular activity you can possibly think of um, I was a part of I was a cheerleader I played basketball um, I played softball I was in the choir my high school choir and I lead sing at my church um, I was in my high school pageant and was first runner up to be Miss Beach. And I won the talent competition singing Mariah Carey Hero. So I'm very talented. I'm, I'm a talented, talented girl. If I do say so myself, pat on my back. Um, but I have nothing to show for it. So, and this is going to all tie in together. So what I mean by I have nothing to show for it is that um, I had over 85 trophies from my childhood that I wanted to one day show my kids and say, your mama did this, your mama did that. I don't have anything to show for it because I lost it all dealing with no good. Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So in high school, um, I went to a high school, high school here in Savannah, Georgia, where I was born and raised. And my freshman year, um, you know, you, you just get to high school and you start kind of smelling yourself and all the dudes think you're pretty. You got this shape, like, ooh, little slim waist with a big old butt. <laughs> that was me. So all the seniors wanted to talk to me. All the senior guys wanted to talk to me. And I just started smelling myself. And then um, they graduated because I'm in ninth grade. And then when I became uh, a junior and a senior, junior, 
I still kept in contact with the guy I was talking to. And then when I graduated, we still kept in contact. But <clears throat> during my senior year, I moved out of my mom's house at the age of 17. I was working at Applebee's. I had worked there for two years. That was the longest job I have ever kept in my life. I always got fired from my jobs on my days off. Like I never had a job where I did not get fired on my day off. That was bad. That's how I knew I was meant to be an entrepreneur. Like I knew I could not work for anybody. So um, I saved them my money and I moved out of my mom's house because me and my mom was bumping heads. You know, I was smelling myself at my high school Talk, oh Lord, talk. I'm grown. I got my own money. I should have stayed in a child's place, is what I should have done. Um, and then I moved out, and no good. We still kept in contact. He played basketball as well. I played basketball in high school, and so did he. Um, but he had gone, graduated, and I'm a senior, so he was four years ahead of me. We had still kept in contact, but not as often or frequent as we used to when we were in high school. So, but I'm still in high school, but we wasn't speaking as frequent as he was in high school. So one day, um, like I said, I moved out of my own apartment, working at Applebee's as a server, making really good money at the time. And then we were talking and one day, y'all, I'll tell you, I'm not lying. He showed up with a black trash bag full of clothes. And I'm like, where the hell are you going? <laughs> what you doing? Why are you at my door with the trash bag full of clothes? And it was cute for a couple of days. You know what I mean? Like, okay, my little, I guess he was my boyfriend at the time. My boyfriend staying with me. Okay, grown, y'all, grown. Paying my own bills, though. So my mom, it was irritating my mom because she really didn't have any say-so, I guess so to speak, because I'm in my own place. So she was like, you can't have any boys over there. But she had cut me off. Her and my daddy completely cut my behind off. And it's thundering. So I don't know if y'all hear that thunder. But um, yeah, she had completely cut me off. So him and I were talking. And the day that man, or the day that guy walked through my front door is the day my life turned for the worst. I was an A student, a B student in high school. I was always independent. My dad had always taught me to never depend on anybody. My dad, my daddy taught me to never depend on him. You never depend on anybody. You figure things out on your own. Whatever situation you're in, don't go looking for handouts and look at you figure it out on your own. And that's what carried me to who I am today. Although it was tough and it was hard, those words stuck with me all my life. So, oh, I'm about to get emotional already. Oh, my God. I'm st man up, girl. So, yes, though that, that stuck with me. And when he walked through my door, that was the first day of I began to hit rock bottom. Um, I had moved out of the current apartment that I was in and moved into a townhome. Still doing really good for myself. And not to mention, y'all. I had bought a brand, this was 2007, um, I had bought a brand new car fresh off the lot, 2007. And at this point I had graduated when I moved into my townhome. So I graduated from my high school in 2007, doing well for myself, making my own money. And then my friends who I thought were my friends in the high school, uh, and I called her my sister, she was like my sister. She had came into some issues um with her the father of her child because she had gotten pregnant in high school and her baby daddy put her out and she was out on her behind and i'm young don't know no better i was like well you can come stay with me for a couple of days you know until you get yourself on your feet let me tell you something don't trust no bitch around your man okay i learned that the hard way Let's carry on. I'm in this apartment and me and my boyfriend is apartment and my friend, she's sleeping on my couch, waiting for her to get herself together. Um, doing well for myself. I'm in college. I'm working um, full time as well, but I'm, I'm in college too. And we all went, all three of us went to the same college. Myself, No Good, and Tatiana. We all went to the same college. So it kind of, you know, was okay for me. Like she was my best friend. 
we were like sisters. We did everything together. In the midst of this, after maybe a couple of months of me moving into my apartment, I had found out that I was pregnant. I was eight weeks along. And then one day I woke up massive bleeding and I went to the hospital and it was like, you know, they did an ultrasound and said, you're fine. You know, you just had a threatening miscarriage. Everything looks good with the baby. She has, it has a heartbeat, everything. So I was like, okay. Didn't tell my mom. Nobody knew I was pregnant at the time. Like I said, I was only eight weeks along. And let's be clear. I knew what the hell I was doing. Okay. I knew, I knew exactly what I was doing. So I got back home. It was like two o'clock in the morning, leave him to the hospital. He, no good, had gone with me to the hospital. And Tatiana was still at my, still at my town home watching TV on my couch. So when I got in the house, we got in the house and she was like, are you okay? Everything good? I was like, yeah, everything fine. So I was like, I was exhausted. Um, they had gave me some pain medications because I was cramping really bad. And I was like, I'm just gonna go upstairs and go to sleep. I was, I was tired. Went upstairs, went to sleep. And it's about four, four or five-ish. I always wake up around this time just randomly I wake up look at the time look at my phone and I always go back to sleep always done that my whole life um well as a young adult I felt him get in the bed with me at this time so I didn't pay it any attention I just felt him lay back down so the next morning um we all was getting ready to go to school like we all went to the same college Waking up, getting ready to go to school. Um, I got dressed. I was feeling much better. And I was walking downstairs. Like my my room door is right here. And this is the stairs. Like, and then the front door is literally right there. So I can see the front door from the top of the stairs. And I'm walking downstairs. And as I'm walking downstairs, Tatiana walks in the door. And then No Good is walking behind me, come about to come down the stairs too. So I'm like, where the hell is she coming from? But I was like, where you coming from? And she's like, oh, I just went around the corner because her baby daddy had lived around the corner. She's like, oh, I just I just went around the corner and I'm coming to get my stuff. So, you know, she's getting dressed to go to school. I tell y'all, no lie, as I'm walking down these damn stairs, we gossiping, we we friends, okay? I'm, I'm reliving this, so I'm getting angry all over again. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm walking down the damn stairs. He's walking behind me and she's coming in the door. And mind you, I'm the middle. I'm in the middle. So she, they stop like a fucking deer in headlights and looking at each other. And I'm looking at her and she looking at him. I look back at him. He looking at her and I'm like, the hell y'all looking at? Just like that. That's my, my, my exact, what the hell y'all looking at? And so she was like, Rashida, come just come here. I need to speak with you. I need to talk to you. And I was like, well, what's up? Back then, I was reckless. I'm not even going to lie. I was reckless. I will put my hands on you. So she was, And she knew this. So she tried to calm me down before she even told me anything. So she was like, uh, come here. I just need to talk to you. I'm like, tell me right here. Like, well, come outside. I said, no, nah, whatever you got to tell me, tell me here. Like, this is how I'm talking. This is how I talk for real. Then, <laughs> well, I still can get that way. I ain't gonna lie. Um, and so I had ended up going around the corner to her, her baby daddy house, and we stood outside. And she was like, um, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm like, you better say it. What? Because at this point, I already can tell and sense what's going on clearly about what had transpired before we got over here so she was like he um forced himself on me but he they didn't she didn't use those words i'm just trying to pg it a little bit he forced himself on me and i said who and she was like no good i said girl let's be for real she was like he did force himself on me and blah, blah, blah. so she had showed me a text where she had sent a blast text message out to everybody that we hung out with in high school or whatever saying that he had forced himself on her I, autom I automatically knew it was a lie because I know the type of person that she was we got into it a very physical altercation I left her laying on the ground um and then I went back to my town home and when I got back to my town home see I wasn't of age to carry pew pew right 
I wasn't of age to carry or didn't think that I needed to carry. I was only 19. Was I 19? No, I, let me see, I had her. Yeah, I was 19. I was 19 years old, so I didn't think to have to carry anything like that. And I thank God that I didn't have one because I'd probably be in prison right now. So, but when I got home, I went straight to my kitchen because my form of protection then was a butcher knife. Y'all know them big, long, square butcher knives? Yeah, that's what I had. And I seen him coming down the stairs and I said, you f that to my house? Y'all, I, I, I literally had... It, it was a movie. It was a movie. I said, you f this to my house? He was like, no, no, no. Let me talk. Let me explain. Let me explain. I ain't wanting to hear nothing he had to say. I took that butcher knife and he was upstairs at the top of the stairs by my room door. I took that butcher knife and I tossed it. And you know, I said, woof, 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 woof. <laughs> and he closed the door just in time. And it's, <laughs> it's got stuck in the door and I tried to open the door. I kicked the door down. Mind y'all, I'm pregnant, y'all, pregnant, okay? Kick, I was kicking the door down. I had punched holes in the wall. Like I couldn't get through the door. And so I started punching it to the point to where it was see-through and then I had just bust the whole thing on and went like, went through the door. Dead serious, like I was livid. It, the Lord couldn't keep me off him or couldn't get me off him. I was heated. Like, nigga, how dare you? You in my house? Well, I paid all the bills in here and you gonna sleep with with her? Are you, are you stupid or are you dumb? Baby, let me tell you something, y'all. I had the best waiting to exhale moment. <laughs> Baby, I was Angela Bassett. Okay, I took all his clothes and shoes that I paid for. I took his clothes and shoes and she had stuff, her clothes and shoes and stuff there too. I took all that stuff on my patio. He tried, I said, you stop me. You ain't gonna be able to walk out this house alive. Don't play with me. So he knew not to bother me. I took all both of their clothes and shoes, set it in a big uh, metal trash. I don't know what it was, but it was a big metal bin thing outside of my patio. I dumped them there put some lighter fluid or whatever it was I had from lighting up a grill. I had a black amount, yeah, I promise to God, I threw it in there. <laughs> and went back in the house and watched that shit burn. Don't you ever play with me. But this, this is not, this is not, that's not it. She had the audacity to come back to my house and saying she gonna come get her things. Baby, you ain't got nothing to get. You gonna have to start over from, from scratch. Okay, you ain't got nothing over here. Toodles, there's nothing for you over here to get. Couple of days go by, maybe maybe a, even a week or so. And he gone, she gone. I'm in my apartment um, by myself. But this time I had my other friend there and I'm telling her, what happened? Y'all, I can literally see the whole thing rehappening all over again. And I was, we were sitting on the couch and I was explaining to her and a couple of other friends that went to school with me, we all came to, we was all in my house and talking, you know, having a good time or whatever, get my mind off of things. They were drinking, of course. I'm, I'm pregnant, y'all, I'm pregnant. And all I heard was, pa, 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 against my, my window and then I heard the window almost shatter. I'm like, what the, what the fuck is that? I ain't in the hood, y'all. I'm in a decent neighborhood where town's home, how town homes were. And I'm like, what the what the hell? This girl then put out a uh, told y'all she sent a mass text saying that he forced himself on her. So her cousins, her male cousin decide to come shoot up my apartment. I guess thinking that he was there. They shot up my town home. Shot my car up, brand new, 2007, off the lot with the plastic still on it. Shot it up. The next day, the rental office co told me that I had to vacate and that I was being evicted. I, I had entered in such a depression. Um, I had so much value and memories left in that town home every memory that i had about my um 
my high school, my child, my, all my trophies, everything, pictures, everything, I had put in storage. Um, I had up losing my job because I had become so depressed and stressed out. I stopped working. I stopped going to school. At this point, this is where I hit rock bottom. I was kissing the floor. That's how how low I was at the moment. To the point to where if anybody told me the only way you can go was up, I wouldn't believe them. Because I had been down there I, literally laying on the floor. That's the feeling I would nobody would ever want to feel. It was the worst feeling in the world. I moved out, no job, dropped out of dropped out of school, pregnant, got extremely sick from being depressed and stressed out because at this point she had taken out um, um, a case on him for uh, forcing himself on her. So he had a, a charge on him at this point. So my mom and my brothers um, helped me move. And my dad didn't want to have anything to do with me because it was a I told you so type of situation. And I, I needed him at that moment. So he wasn't talking to me. Uh, and then when I had all, all my trophies and everything, all of the memories that kept me happy, I put into storage and I should have left them at my mom's house. Did not was not able to afford my storage. Mind you, I'm not the one to ask for help. So I wasn't going to ask my mom, can you pay my storage for me? Although I felt like it was a situation to where she could have offered. But I was I wasn't going to ask her. I was going to try to figure it out on my own. And when I did figure it out, it was too late. They had already sold my storage, so I'm sure they didn't want to keep my sassages, my plaques, my trophies. I'm sure it was in a dumpster. And at that moment, I just, I just felt, I honestly felt like there was no reason to even live anymore. That's how I felt. That's how I felt. Um, I slept in my car. I could have gone home to my mama's house. I could have went to my mama's house for sure. But I was grown. That's what I, I said. I was grown, and I'm going to figure this out. That that was my thought process. I'm going to figure this out on my own. Slept in my car for about a week. Um, I would go park my car in the mall parking lot and go to sleep. Sometimes I would sleep on my cousin's sofa and go to her house just to, you know, grab me a bite to eat when I got hungry. I'm pregnant, y'all. 19. I'm pregnant going through all of this. Okay? Even to the point to where... I used to go to No Good's sister house and sleep on her couch for a while. And then my cousin, one day, at this point, I'm about 24 weeks. This is how long this has been going on. This is how long I have been bouncing from couch to couch in my car. Oh, not to mention, um, my car had got repossessed. They literally tried to tow my car when I was in it asleep and didn't know it. So I had to call my cousin and to come get me because they were trying to tow my car. So I was like, whatever, you know? Um, and in my mind, I always said, I'm gonna figure it out. And she, and cause she would ask me like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I'm gonna figure it out. I'll figure it out. That's what I kept telling myself. I'm gonna figure it out. So one day we went to, she took me to Walmart to buy me a couple of snacks or whatever. And when I was in Walmart, I saw um, Tatiana. I saw her. And I, mind you, I hadn't seen this girl since I was eight weeks pregnant. I hadn't seen her since then. I'm now 24 weeks pregnant. And I see her. And I immediately get angry all over again. I wanted to choke the f out of her. I am, because you did this to me, bitch. Excuse my French. That, that's what I was, you did this. 
But both of y'all did it. That's how I felt at the time. And I tried to ignore her. My cousin was like, Rashida, just ignore her. Keep going. You pregnant. You know, you can't be doing this. So we walked every time, every god darn hour. She worked there now. Every hour we went on, I see this girl face. I see her and I just get angrier and angrier and angrier. And my cousin would continuously say, Rashida, let it go. Come on, let's go. Let's just get what you need and let's let's just go. So we walk out the store. <laughs> We walk out the store and we walk to my cousin's car and we're getting in the car and we're talking about it. It's myself, my cousin, and her best friend. And we're walking to my cousin's car and I'm getting in the back seat. And then I open my door and accidentally hit the car next to me because it was too close. And I look, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. It was Tatiana. You parked next to us. Why? Y'all know this girl had the audacity to roll her window down. She rolled her window down at first. It was like, why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? And I sat there for a minute. And I'm just, you know how on the movies and you just, you just, it, on the movie, it's like they're just blacked out and it's just like people talking. But you, you hearing them, but you zoned out. That's what I did for about five minutes. I zoned down and whooped her ass in that in that car. I drug her ass. Yes, I did. I drug her right out that car. I beat her head on the pavement and I left. I zoned out. I blacked the hell out. I sure did. I sure did. And when I got home, I got back to my cousin's house rather, and I wasn't feeling too good. I was like, dang, I don't feel good. So, um, I think my cousin had to go out of town. And like two days later, I ended up having to go to my mom's house. I went to my mom's house because she was cooking and she told me to just come over. Come eat. You need to come eat some home cooked food. So I went over there and I was eating. And then I laid. I went to go lay in my old room just to take a nap because I wasn't still feeling good. I was having cramps. I didn't know that they were contractions at the time. I'm like, dang, mom, my stomach hurt. Like, she was like, what do you mean your stomach hurt? I said, I feel real bad. Cramps like I got the boo boo. She was like, well, go boo boo. <laughs> So I was like, well, there ain't nothing coming out. And I was like, Mama, this ain't something ain't right. I said, no, this this ain't this ain't no regular cramps. So we went to the hospital. They put me on machine. I was having contractions. And they sent me home. They gave me some type of medication. I can't remember. And they sent me home. And when I got home, about an hour later, they got worse. I mean, they got intense. I was like, mm-mm, I got to go back. I got to go back, Mama, so I went back to the hospital, and I had been two centimeters dilated. Mind you, I am 24 weeks pregnant. This baby cannot come at all. Like, little girl, you need to stay in there. I was two centimeters dilated, um, and they kept me, and they had me put my feet up. They gave me medication to try to stop my contractions, all type of stuff. They tried to even stitch my cervix. Um, back together and it just was it wasn't working I was dilating fast so May 13th at 1 48 a.m. my daughter was born at one pound eight ounces they kept telling me they kept saying she wasn't going to make it through the night um, and then 24 hours passed by then they said she wasn't going to make it past the week a week passed by and then they said she wasn't going to make it through a month. And I said, well, at this point, I'm not listening to y'all no more. And during this time, my daughter, sa my daughter saved me. Do you hear me? My daughter saved my life. Okay? She saved me. My daughter saved my life. I started listening to gospel, and one of the songs that kept me going was Marvin Sapp, Never Would Have Made It. That song had just came out, and I listened to it every single day. I went to go see my daughter in the NICU. She had been in the NICU for three months. She had eight blood transfusions. She had a bronchoscopy. Uh, what is it called? Bron I don't know. I think it was a bronchoscopy. Um, they had messed up her voice box. It, she had been through so much, and I blamed myself. I blamed myself for a very long time, but she saved me. And 
it was a blessing in disguise because when my baby came home, um, she came home when she was three months old. And y'all know the platform, MySpace. So she came home with a breathing tube, tons of medications, and a heart monitor. Her heart would stop randomly throughout the night. Um, one night, it got so bad to where I thought, now at this point, I'm living with my mom. Of course, my mom, she's not going to let her grandbaby be out. So she she's like, you coming home. You got this baby. You need to come home. Um so she had came home with a lot of medication. She was on steroids. Uh, it, it was just, it was a lot. It was a lot. Uh, so during that time, I wasn't able to work because I had to be home with my baby because I had to administer her medications at certain times. So I was not able to work at the time. So I spent my time on what was then MySpace, yeah, MySpace. I had a MySpace page that was the kept me going, you know. And then one day I went in my inbox and this dude was like, I like what I see. I'm like, boy, what you saying? <laughs> what you talking about? I like what I see. So he we started talking on MySpace, gave him my phone number, lied child, lie by my age, girl. Lie by my age. And then finally told him like a year later, it was like, oh, when my birthday came around, I was like, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I think I told him I was 21 at the time. <laughs> I was 19 as hell. 19 turning 20. And I think I told him I was about to turn 21 or something like that. And I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm actually 20 or 20. I forgot how old I was turning. He was like, what? You lied about your age? Well, what you going to do? Leave? <laughs> so, um. And he's my husband, baby. He's been in my daughter's life for since she was three months old. My baby is now 15. And from there, my life started looking up again. I, we, we started talking and spending a lot of time together in the relationship that he has with my daughter. I, can, I cannot have asked for anything anything better and I always told myself I want somebody with the qualities of my daddy um oh and I had not talked to my dad for a very long time my whole pregnancy I did not talk to my daddy but he did show up when he found out I was going to labor I think my mom told me he showed up at the hospital and when he came in walking in the door I was like what you doing here <laughs> But I'm a daddy's girl, and I had missed my daddy. But we had not talked for a long time. That's the train. Excuse me if you get hit a train. So um, my husband and I, Tremar, we started talking every single day. My husband and I started, we started talking every day. We went on our first date. And from then, we were inseparable. Like, he used to come to my mom's house rock my daughter to sleep like she would not go to sleep it got to a point to where she wouldn't even go to sleep for me anymore he would have to rock her in order for her to go to sleep like that's how much of a bond he had developed with her and it was just such an amazing thing to see like I was like oh my god Ooh, boy I'm gonna marry you 15 years later <laughs> but that's when my when we were dating, my husband and I, when we were dating, we were broke as hell. He ain't had no money. I ain't had no money. And we, when we were broke, those were the happiest times we ever had. Like, we would go to these open houses. You know how people have open houses when they show, when they're trying to sell a house. We acting like we about to buy the house. Like, oh yeah, we've been pre-approved for um, a mortgage line. We used to do the same thing with apartments. Used to go manifest. We used to go window shop all the time. We were so broke. My husband lived on the east side of Savannah and my mom lived on the south side of Savannah. Far apart. 35 minutes away. We were so broke that he would drive to my mom's house on an empty tank and I would scrape up quarters around the house <laughs> and I used to come over like two or three dollars for gas I was like oh babe I got your gas money so you can get back home <laughs> 
Yes, we used to scrape up quarters, any change to put in his tank so he can make it back home. That's how broke we was. It was crazy. But then um, I started, we started to get back on my feet and my mom helped me get a job at the tax commissioner office. She had been working there for 40 years. Now it's been 40 years, but then she had been working there for a long time and I had got a job working at the um, tag office and I was working um, odd jobs uh, then too. So my husband and I, we had moved out. I, well, I made him move out of his mom's house. So we moved into our first apartment. We had been in that apartment. Everything was going good. He had proposed to me. It was the worst proposal in the world. I came home from work and he was playing the game. And it was dishes in the sink. And I could have sworn I had told him to put the dishes up because I washed them. I said, just put the dishes up so I can cook when I get home. It was the worst proposal ever. He was like, just go ahead and put them up for me. Put them up for me. And I'm putting, I'm slamming shit. Like, I told you to put them up. I opened the cabinet about to put up the one, some of the bowls. And it's a ring in there open. I said, nigga, is this your way of proposing to me? <laughs> but I accepted it. <laughs> like, how ghetto is this? You gonna put my ring in the cupboard? What? Who does that? My child was calling my husband daddy. And that's been her daddy ever since she was three months old. Um... I know my husband and I got tired of working regular nine to fives because, again, I had got fired from the tax commissioner. I don't know what it was, but I was like, we got to figure something out. Like, we got to figure something out. And then I had a degree, well, associate's degree for computer information systems. So I decided, I said, well, maybe I want to do something that's in my career field. I started working as a government contractor um, for a company, and I hated that. I still hated my job. And then I started doing research because in my husband and I free time, my fiance at the time, free time, we would like to ride around and look at big houses. And we used to see all these expensive cars. And I'm like, ain't no way these people making this type of money living here. Like we live in a city to where making that type of money wasn't a normal thing. So I was like, it got to be another way. So I started researching and I came across this small group that was talking about business credit. And I used to get on these calls and I was the only little black girl on these calls. I was like, these folks got credit for, they, for their businesses? Like, what the hell? Never heard of it, never heard of it. But I would always, be get, always get on those calls faithfully. And they taught each other how to build each other's business credit, how you can report to each other's business credit reports. So, I began building my own business credit. I was like, babe, I think I figured it out. I, I told him just like that. And from that moment, I said, let's buy a house. My whole mindset had changed. I said, quit your job. I will buy you a truck so you can start doing your, truck, your trucking business. And he was like, girl, are you crazy? I said, trust me. I got it. And he know once I set my mind to something, it's like, it's, it's no going back. So I told him, I said, quit. He was working at the airport doing some warehouse type job. I said, quit your job. I got us. I said, let's go buy a house. We bought a house. I started my first business as selling raw Cambodian hair. And it took off. I made my first YouTube. If y'all scroll all the way down on my, my page, 2015, I think it was. That's when my first YouTube video, teaching people how to build business credit and buy inventory with it. I had started my hair company, made buku money selling hair. I was like, ooh, we shit. This is real. And I built business credit and built over $150,000. And my husband was like, you did that shit for real? Yes. I was like, I got to tell somebody. I got to show people. How, and that's when I made my YouTube video. And from that moment on, it was history. I've been a boss ever since. <laughs> I've been a boss ever since. And I went on tour and did workshops and seminars, teaching people how to build their business credit, how to establish their businesses. And then on, I learned how to um, protect myself because I had been getting sued um, people was taking me to court. I ain't never showed up to court. But through that, 
I learned how to protect myself. I learned how to protect my assets because I had people try to come after me for my inventory and everything, my cars, everything. I learned everything that I'm teaching you guys. I learned on my own. I learned from, from messing myself up genuinely. Ain't nobody taught me nothing. My daddy just instilled me to never depend on nobody. Figure that shit out on your own. I've, I've been figuring it out ever since and I'm still figuring it out and I'm going to continue to figure it out. But guess what? I'm never going to be closed minded to learning new things. Never, ever. If there's a course, I'm going to take it. I don't care how much it costs. The most I've ever spent for a course was $4,000. You can never learn too much. You can never learn too much. But you're going to have to start somewhere. And it's it's and that shit might not feel good. Start from the bottom ain't going to feel good. It ain't going to feel good. I was kissing rock bottom. Like me and rock bottom had a relationship. And I sh it did not feel good, but I vowed to never in life. And I never, and people say never say never. I will never, mark my words, I will never get into a position to where I get to where I was 15 years ago. Never. I've made sure I set up stocks, bonds. If anything, God forbid anything happens, I got stacks on stacks on top of stacks that I can always go back and get. But I ain't going to need to do that because guess what? I've learned so much over the years. People would pay top dollar to learn what I've, what I've learned and what I've accumulated over these years. People didn't know nothing about business credit. Nothing. Business credit was not a thing when I learned about business credit. When I made that video, nobody knew at least not us, that your business can have its own separate credit profile. I told my husband to quit his job. And guess what? I started his trucking company, bought his first truck, $30,000 cash. You don't see stuff like this every day. If you just stop and listen and learn, y'all would be surprised the, of the information you'll come across. And once you learn something, monetize it. Always monetize it. Somebody want to know what you know. I, I don't mind giving information away for free. That, that information that's going to change your life. You got to be in my circle. You got to be in my academy. Because some information you just don't let everybody know. Because then they go out and abuse it. I literally went from hitting rock bottom to making six figures by myself. And I heard someone say, there's no such thing as a self-made. Man, I'm self made boss my daddy raised a beast you hear me my daddy raised a beast i ain't never going back sleeping on nobody couch ever again my kids will never go through what it is that i've been through but again i didn't have a rough childhood i i decided i chose to live that way because i am who i am today because i chose that route i want to figure it out on my own i want nobody helping me i got this yeah, this shit gonna hurt for a while, but I'm gonna get out of it though. I'm gonna figure it out. My husband knows to this day, God forbid, if anything happens, he knows I'm gonna figure it out. And if it's something that I can't control, if I don't got the money for it, guess what? They'll get it when I get it. And when I get it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give me something first before I give it to anybody else. I don't give a damn about no bills. We'll figure it out. I'll make a quick offer. Somebody wanna learn something. Well, let me make an offer. Hey, I'll teach you this for $200. Y'all use, use the unthinkable. Use the unthinkable. Think outside the box. There is no reason why nobody should not be able to make money, especially with social media today. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Look what I've, look what I've built with my bare hands. I did this by myself. Every time I walk into my studio, like I did this shit by myself. My husband didn't even help me with this. My husband ain't no contractor. He didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. But guess what? I figured it out. I figured it out. He's not the type of person that I am. I'm gonna go figure that I, look what I've built. Had no clue what I was doing. When God gave me a vision, I see it and I, I can't unsee it until I finish it. And I finished it and I'm proud of myself. I monetized the studio. I got two brands. I got money coming in constantly. I hit rock bottom having nothing. My car was repossessed while I was sleeping in it. 
There's no reason why you should be in a situation you're in if you're in one. I'm telling you, you just need to get a hold of somebody who has been through it. Get a hold on to somebody who can help you navigate through this business world. I appreciate my headaches with business because the headaches that I have is just so many thoughts of more ideas of ways that I can make more money. But um, let me tell you this, let's not get it confused. You have to love doing it. When you start doing stuff for money, it's not, it's never going to work out. You have to enjoy what you're doing. I'm enjoying sitting here talking to y'all. Whoever watching this, this is what makes me happy. This is me coaching. I knew I was supposed to be coaching, but I didn't know how I was supposed to coach. And this is it. I'm sitting here being vulnerable, telling y'all a story I ain't never told before. My mama don't even know this. She don't even, till this day, she don't even know what happened in my apartment. But I'm telling it to y'all, to the world. <laughs> Whoever sees this, like you can do it. You just got to believe in yourself and keep telling yourself, I'm going to figure it out. Just keep that, keep that locked in your mind every day. Whatever you go through, I'm going to figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'm good. I'm going to figure it out. And as hard as it is to keep high vibration and faith, it's hard. You know, in the midst of, in the midst of your troubles, you don't want to hear all that. I'm, you want to be angry and I get it. You have every right to feel how you feel. Be in your feelings, but know that it's all working out for your good. I promise you, everything I've been through was necessary. Everything I've been through was necessary and it's still necessary. My daughter will be a millionaire by the time she's 21. She'll never go through what I've been through. I'm going to make sure of it. I'm building empires. Every time, it's been times I want to give up. I, I still want to give up sometimes. I'm tired. But I will never allow my kids to go through what it is that I've been through. And I'm going to keep, I will bust my ass every single day. So, <laughs> I'm sorry I got emotional, but I hope this touched somebody. Y'all yeah, definitely leave in the comments. T tell me your story. I want to know your story. I hope this was a blessing to somebody. I hope this blessed somebody on today or tonight. It's actually what day. Y'all got me crying in there, child. It's Friday. I'm going to go home and I'm about to edit this and it'll be uploaded tomorrow, Saturday at 3 p.m. But um, I hope this is a blessing. Y'all keep going. You got to keep going. You have no choice. You don't have a choice. If I can do it, you can do it. I will see y'all Wednesday. Thank y'all so much for watching. Y'all go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and put on that notification so you'll be notified when I upload on Wednesday. I love y'all and good night.